Hello everyone, it is Joe here from Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. And today we're going to be talking about Galissapod in the expanded format. He has proved his worth in standard after seeing the World Championships, him placing second with Garbodor. We're going to see a slightly different approach taken in expanded, and I'll go through those decisions uh, as we run through the deck, as per usual. So, first of all, a 3-3 line of our main attacker. First of all, we are using the Wimp out Wimpod. This ability is, of course, incredible. During your first turn, this Pokemon has no retreat cost. Typically, he would have a 3 retreat cost, which is pretty ugly. Um, but that ability is going to make it much cleaner for us. It means that technically we have 5 optimal leads in the deck. Two of them being Cocos and three of them being Wimpods. Because on turn one, we can freely retreat. Bear this in mind from when I talk about Seismitoad, because it's very similar to Toad Bats, in that you used to have four Zubats that all had free retreat, um, which means you can move into your Seismitoad very effectively. Uh, we're going to keep that same mentality here to get early Quaking Punches. So Wimpod, great for protecting itself to the bench, but also can be a great turn one lead for you to get into Seismitoad to get Quaking Punching very efficiently. Then we are going to play three Galissapod GX. I think he is crazy good and expanded. Two 10 HP Grass type. Uh, this Grass typing is already a huge bonus for the card. Uh, it means we hit for weakness on Aquabox. Pretty much all the attackers in Aquabox. Uh, any Seismitoad variant outside of Aquabox. Uh, things like Toad Surviper, uh, Toad Tina, Toad Garb. We hit all these things for weakness. We hit Greninja for weakness as well, even some of the fighting type decks like Lycanroc or Zygarde Carbink, we hit all of these for one hit KOs, uh, even Primal Groudon is weak to Grass, although we can't one hit KO him because in theory he's always going to have a Focus Sash, we can put him down to 10 HP for one energy, which is really good. So yeah, uh, Glissopod, very very strong, also we can pop Sashes with Cocos, bear that in mind, obviously they play healing, but yeah, let's not go into it. Um, yeah, Glissopod, very very good card. So let's look at his actual attacks. First impression is the one we will be using most for a single grass energy. We deal 30 and if this Pokemon was on your bench and became active during this turn, you deal an additional 90 damage. 120 as we know is the baseline that we use in standard to get two shots and everything. But here it's expanded. Things are a little bit different around here. We play heavy choice band, four lasers and Verbank City Gym. And having the 30 buff from Poison plus the 30 buff from Choice Band means, guess what, we are hitting 180 damage. The golden number for some of these other uh, basic EX GX focused decks. Uh, things like Turbo Darkrai, even things like Volcanion. Now we do have Seismitoad for Volk to try and counteract the type coverage type thing. But also we can one hit KO them even though... Uh, we are weak and are likely to get responded back. We can prize race against them as long as we can hit these combo pieces. So Glissopod, very efficient at getting one hits on everything. Uh, GX and EX, really good for one-shotting. Um, even some non-EXs in the format. 120 is the baseline for Garbodor, which is huge. Other stage ones like Vespiquen, those are going to be easily de uh, dealt with. Um, additionally, we can one-shot Shaman without all these extra cool buff cards. So no matter what, Guzmaring Shaman is going to be an easy two prizes for us. We then have two more attacks. Armor Press is one you will rarely use. For a Grass DC, you deal 100 and reduce 20 done to yourself next turn. Kind of okay if need be. If there's certain archetypes that cap out at 210, you could start going for this to try and tank and use Acer Rollers. And we have Crossing Cut GX, which does 150 for Grass DC. Bear in mind 150, much better number when we're playing lasers and choice bands we are easily hitting 180 in many situations which is again a knockout on basic EXs and GXs so Glissopod much heavier hitter than he has seen in standard so much more dangerous and we also get to switch this Pokemon with one of your benched really nice because it sort of resets first impression for following turns if he is able to survive and also it throws up most likely a non-EX into the active to hurt the opponent's prize trade Oftentimes it will be a Tapu Coco just because it has free retreat. So yeah, the 3-3 three, three line of Glisspod as our main attacker, very, very strong card. We're going to follow up with two Seismitoad X with that Quaking Punch. He's a water type, of course, so we can try and fend off fire types this way. Uh, Volcanion is a pretty powerful archetype with Blacksmith. And just in general, Seismitoad is really good at shutting down a few turbo decks with his Quaking Punch attack. Uh, denying items from your opponent is always going to be strong. 
uh, especially against things like Aquabox, things like Turbo Darkrai, and most notably things like Night March. Night March is a deck that can get one hit KOs even against 210 HP, especially if they play things like Choice Band. Uh, but because we have the Karen Toad combo, we should be pretty good. <laughs> uh, Double Toad and Karen, pretty nice. We play lasers on top of that, so we can actually one shot Pump Caboos. Um, yeah, pretty good stuff. Um, pretty good card. Toad, obviously, very good. Type coverage as well, just makes him even more valuable. Very similar to how we played like Toad Decidui almost for type coverage at times. So yeah, very cool card. Two Tapu Koko, free retreat is going to be big. And I chose to play a second copy over a Pseudo Wudo in here because I feel, well, first of all, he's a better lead than Pseudo Wudo will ever be. But also, I feel he's strong enough to start tackling the Rayquaza matchup. Two copies of him and Toad in the early turns trying to deny Ray in the first place. Uh, because we play such a high count of lasers and choice bands, Coco is hitting for weakness, of course. Doing a flying flip for 100 against the Ray for just a DC is pretty efficient as a non-EX. And at the same time, we're spreading to the bench. We can then later on Guzma up Shamans with Coco, again with that choice band, take them out in one hit, which is going to be really strong for you. I know some Rays will be playing Mr. Mime because of Necrozma, of course, uh, but it's still an option for us. He's a powerful non-EX that is able to threaten two shots on Rays, which is kind of awkward, and we can try and then go into like the N plus Toad plus Change Stadium strategy. It's always a good one against Rayquaza. And when we play so many Guzmas of our own, we can always prey on Shamans with our Glissopods, which is pretty cool for us. Then we are going to play three Tapu Lele GX, of course, big consistency card. With that Wonder Tag, you can uh, grab yourself some supporters. One of the big ones we'll look for is Bridget. We are a stage one deck, and uh, getting double Wimpod plus Remoraid is oftentimes fabulous for, it, for you for great setup later on in the game. Um, and then we can also just spam other supporters that we need. Ace Roder and Guzma, again, clutch cards at certain points. And Karen is going to be big for things like Vesicum Flareon and uh, Night March. Then we're going to play a 2-2 line of Octillery. Uh, we're going to use the Iron Pool Remoraid for anyone who cares. And we're going to have Octillery in here. The reason why I prefer the Octillery build to Garbodor build in, uh, stand, uh, in Expanded, sorry, is because we're much more aggressive with our Glissopods. We're taking one shots with this guy. Whereas in Standard, you're much more progressive, you're much more defensive, because you can't get one hot uh, one shots. You have to go for Acerola Prize Denial Loop. We still have the Prize Denial aspect in this deck, but we look to get one shots. And the way we look to get one shots is combo orientated. We need lasers, we need choice bands, we need our stadium to be in play. And we also need a way of switching Glissopod. This is the biggest thing. We need to get all these things without oftentimes using a draw supporter. And that means we're going to rely on artillery to grab us the things like lasers, like Verbank, like Choice Band, like Energy, or even VS Seekers to get into our specific supporters. Artillery, fabulous for doing this, keeping our hand size high and also end proofing us in the late game. Really, really powerful card for sure. On to the items now. We are going to play our ace spec of Scoop Up Cyclone. This is one of the few decks that can really take advantage of this in great effect, really. Uh, putting one Pokemon and all cards attached into your hand. It's basically an Acer Roller, um, but you don't need to be damaged. And it's an item card rather than a supporter, which means you can also go for aggressive digs on the turn. You go for Scoop Up Cyclone. It adds to the whole defensive aspect of the deck. Prize Denial, picking up threats from the board, picking up damaged Glissopods because he is a tank, of course. And it's just going to be really strong for you. Um, we've seen Scoop Up in general just being played in Glissopod. Here we can save ourselves three deck slots by just playing one A spec. And it's guaranteed to work on the turn that we need it, which is also very important. And it's three less item cards that we play against Garbodor. So a uh, really nice card fits in perfectly with this deck because the deck is so dirty when it's doing its pickups and resetting the damage. Really setting your opponent back literally a turn is just gross. Uh, three versus Seeker. I chose to go to three instead of four so I could play a third physical Guzma um, because of the popularity of Trev. Three still a high count, still a super good card for getting the right supporter at the right times. Uh, and you have Octillery to fall back on to dig into these as well. Uh, four Ultra Ball, just the consistency card. Getting you into Lele for Bridget is going to be big. Getting you Octillery to get drawing cards. Getting Glissopods to keep attacking. All these things are very important. Four lasers, obviously integral. Great with Seismitoad in the early game as well for great sort of like two-shot potential with Choice Band. 
Uh, but it also makes uh, Glissopod able to one hit KO things, which is also very dirty. Uh, and that is made possible also because of the stadium Verbank City Gym, putting two more damage counters on Poison Pokemon between turns. Uh, very good stuff, really. Some of the one ofs, I've already mentioned Karen. This is the tech for Night March, the tech for Vespi Flareon, and is also our only means of Pokemon recovery. You'll notice we're playing like two counts of most of our dudes and then just the 3 3 Glissopod. So if need be, we can Karen to get some stuff back into the deck. Uh, we are going to play the Bridget, obviously great for getting our dudes on the board. One Chorus. Once you've used a Bridget, Chorus is oftentimes drawing you a bunch of cards because many other archetypes are using things like Hooper Engines. Uh, there are a few Skyfield archetypes out there, so Chorus often gets big, big value. You are going to play 2N. Shuffle Draw is still pretty nice. Uh, we are sort of combo be uh, based, so it's good to keep things like lasers for perfect turns. Uh, good in the early game as well, and um, also late game denying the opponent prizes. Just overall increasing our support count as well is going to be pretty cool. Uh, three Professor Juniper, so we can discard and draw seven. Uh, still good aggressive draw when we need to. Cycling hard for DCs for early Seismitoads is going to be a big deal for you. Uh, but the real stars of the show are going to be Guzma and Acerola. Acerola is so stupid good with Seismitoad. When things can't one hit Kyo Seismitoad and you can Acerola and move into like a Coco and free retreat back into Quaking Punch, it is so dirty, especially when you have Laser Bank in play. It is just so mean to do. And it's so good for us. It's also, as we know, incredible on Glissopod. Even tankier than Toad is, and it resets first impression if you have more on the bench. Even if you just have a little Wimpod, you can pick everything up, put it all back down. Sometimes that's just so good for you. So Acerola in general, broken in this deck. And Guzma as well. Great for targeting EXs and GXs on the bench. Leles are not safe because of banned laser bank, uh, or even like flying flips early on. Um, and also, Shamans just get eaten up very quickly with Glissopod. Shaman is a bigger factor in Expanded than it has been in Standard for sure. So preying on those is genius. Also, as I said earlier, the very high count to try and free yourself from item lock against Trevenants. Four choice band, I think it's the high count, but that's because you want it so frequently. Uh, even though we are acerolaring and picking it all back up and recycling the same choice band oftentimes over and over again, it's just so important to hit these big numbers against aggressive other aggressive decks like Turbo Darkrai. Our energy split is going to be 4-6. It's quite generous, quite a high count. Uh, I like having the higher count because there are a few hammer-based archetypes out there right now. Again, I'm going to mention Trevenant playing lots of crushing hammers, so it's good to have physical grass energies around. Um, I did at one point have 5 uh, grass and a super rod, uh, but I thought super rod and Karen is kind of overkill. So I'd rather just have an extra copy because I want to play more basic energy against item lock so that you physically draw into them, uh, whereas Super Rod would be a dead card. And um, yeah, I think it's just a good number to go for so that you can uh, always access them. And then the 4 DC, much higher than you see in standard lists, but that is because we want to quaking punch people in the face. And we also have the option to Lele. Even Lele Band Ace Roller is like a crazy cycle that you can go for at times. If people can't deal with that, you can Acerola your Lele and then Wonder Tag again to get your next Acerola and then you can just reattach DC Band and start swinging. It's a dirty combo all around. Acerola is such a good card and I think this deck complements Acerola perfectly. So let's have a look at some Pokemon options. Uh, we're playing Karen, so we don't really need Oricorio, uh, but there are a few others in here. One of the big ones is going to be Verizian EX um, with that Verdant Wind ability. Uh, we do play Grass Energy, so we can protect our dudes from status. Because we play such a high count of Acerola and Guzma anyway, it's not likely that anything will get stuck in the active, but it's just trying to tank that a little bit more. Um, sometimes Glissopod can be pushed into range, especially because we keep Verbank in play because we don't play Blowers and we play our own Verbanks. So if our opponents are using lasers, they're always doing 30 extra to us. So if you're able to negate that with a Verizian, that could be pretty cool for you. My only query really is bench space. Once you've laid Bridget, you've got Artillery already chilling there, you've probably got a Coco. Not much space for the Verizian at that point. Uh, I'll make the same point about Keldeo. Uh, that's why we're not going to play that card either. Uh, there's also the other Glissopod, uh, the Noni X. I think it's a decent Noni X, uh, but because we're Acerodering so often, we don't have many free turns to attach to him. Uh, so I'm happy enough without him, to be honest. Uh, four items. The main one I just mentioned, Field Blower. We're not playing this in the deck. We do have Artillery, so 
Diablo does shut it down, which is a bit sad. Um, but we're not hugely ability reliant. I think we kind of are because we can otherwise struggle to close games. Uh, but Field Blower not being played in the deck just because we could, if we ever have to, just Guzma up the Garbodor and knock it out. I think it's not too big of an issue. Um, especially because we have tankings. We're pretty good against uh, Garbodor decks in general because our item count isn't huge. And we can play conservatively. We can just go for Acer Rollers. Uh, and we can Guzma up Garbodor's at will basically because we hit 120 so nicely so um i think we don't really need field blower another reason to play blower maybe would be uh for fighting fury belts when we're hitting so perfectly 180 um it would be nice to get rid of some belts at times i think i'd only ever really fit the space for one and it would mean cutting like a choice band or something like that and i'm not overly pleased about that so uh, i'm not going to go for that cut but it's a card that i do miss at times so yeah, if you really want to work it in, I can see that being reasonable. Uh, another one, as always, Getsis is out there and he can just wreck games. Um, doing an early Getsis and then going into turn two punch can sometimes shut down games even more than we already do. Um, the main problem is I want to develop Wimpods, I want to develop Remoraid, set my own side of the board up because once we're in our cycle, we're just such a more dangerous deck. So I feel that's the way I want to go. And uh, that's how I like to play the deck. So we're going to jump into some games now. See how it goes. I'm definitely a fan. It's typing puts me on board. Because there's going to be Toad players for sure. There's going to be you know a handful of uh, um, Greninjas as well I would imagine. And just destroying those feels like a good standpoint for me. Because I feel a lot of people will naturally go towards Rough Seas based decks to counter Trev. We have lots of Acer Rollers and Guzmas to beat Trev ourselves. And uh, I feel we have the answers to Night March also. And with our tank ability, I think even Turbo Darkrai is good. So I think Galissapod tackles a large portion of the meta. And I think it's an archetype not being discussed enough. So I came here today to change these things. Having said that, we start with a grim hand. <laughs> Any other Pokemon other than the Lele and we'd be perfect here. We play a high count of basic Pokemon too. We play uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah, we play 11. Uh, we can't get game, but we can laser. <laughs> uh, get the heads, which could be important for us. Uh, attaching DC is fine, and we'll just pass. That's all we have. We don't have game, unfortunate. But, uh, ooh, getting the tails flip is brilliant for us. Um, it means we can definitely survive a turn to draw a card. Um, unless they hit, like, rope this turn whilst getting a KO. That would be pretty troll. So we're going to see the opponent go for the Compressor of three Lamps. Another Compressor already in hand. This is going to be a strong turn, I feel. Um, the idea, of course, against Night March is going to go for the uh, Karen and Quaking Punch play after forcing them to put m multiple Night Marches in the bin because of our high HP with Galissapod. Uh, they are just going to grab Sycamore, it looks like, and they're going to go ahead and use that getting uh oh they play ranger something to note they play oracorio maybe for the mirror um rangers notable because of course they now can use items after a quaking punch but it's already in this card oh they're getting rid of a special charge as well all good stuff to be aware of resource management is pretty integral for night march to be successful they're going to dc the mew they're going to choice ban mew as well and they're going to shaman four five so they're doing 130 right now if they can move active. Oftentimes they just play one rope and maybe a float stone. Oftentimes with Guzma now they only play one rope and nothing else actually. Okay, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if they can hit float, they can actually win here. That's 10 in the discard. 10, so they're gonna dig hard here for sure. Let's marshal it down so they can get an extra draw. We just have to cross our fingers. This is just a dead draw game. Gonna put another Mew down. Looks like they miss, which is good for us. <sighs> we're dead, right? Wait, we're not dead. He doesn't have a marsh. He doesn't have a. Uh... He needs to hit DC on Marshadow, right? What else could I do? I could... 
No, that's not what the player here. Uh, we don't attack because we could activate um, teammates, so we just pass for the knockout. <laughs> well, this is just a done game, isn't it? Ah, uh, so sad. I mean, we are playing two stage one, so this can potentially happen, but it's not really a two stage one deck. We play so many basics as well. Yeah, there's comp search for game. You can either get a Night Marcher or he can grab DC for Marshallo. Take your pick, son. Yeah, he's going to go Marshallo. We'll say well played, even though it wasn't a game. And uh, we'll try and get a few more in here. Well, it was good to see Night March. I want to see Night March again because we want to show a full game. But that's a sad start for us. As I say, we play many basics, and that's just an unfortunate draw. Um, yeah, not much you can say about that, but we'll try and get another game in. Gonna go for four games today, because that kind of didn't count. <laughs> I typically like to go for three full games, so. Plus, I just like playing Glissopod. I think it's really strong. I think if I was going to Fort Wayne, I'd probably play this. I think it's juicy. Right, we win the flip again. We'll go first. Okay. Size potato start again, no supporter. You can see the issues of playing so many Acerolas and Guzmas. I mean we play four Ultra Ball, three Lele, three Juniper, two N, one chorus. Like we still play a lot. This is actually an optimal turn, so it's not too bad. Do I commit the DCE? Against the Taurus, you don't actually want to be quaking punching. Uh, we can pass. Taurus is typically a night march, so this might be another night march matchup. Taurus being a one of that you uh, get rid of for Marshall. Though. Looks like it's actually a Garbodor variant. Down comes Lele. Gonna see the Wonder Tag for their own Bridget. I'm jealous. Gonna grab double Trubbish and a pseudo Wudo, which might be a bit annoying for us later on. They're gonna stretch a back Garbador into the hand, it looks like, and just be done with their turn. Now the Wind Pod can come down. We can go for one Quaking Punch. He's using tool drop trubbishes, which is interesting. Uh, this puts him to a 90 with a mad ball. But it buys us a turn. And if he hits 90, we have a Sorola to fall back on if need be. Right, we're gonna see that trash launch come down and just a pass. Grass energy isn't fabulous, not gonna lie here. Um, we'll pass. Don't want to play into Mad Bull. Pretty sure he proactively played Stretcher last turn as his only item in hand anyway. <clears throat> or only playable item. There's the DCE. Probably just gonna be a horn attack, yeah. Oh, come on, game. Not like this. Let's try and force him to play some cards, shall we?
dowsing mech. Gonna grab his own Guzma, I guess. Yeah. Might deal with Remoraid here. No, just gonna go back into Toad. Okay. What is this? What, what's going on here, team? Ah. On garb. Coco spreading. Is it better than Quaking Punch? Don't think so. Hitting for weakness on Pseudo Widow gives us only two turns to um, Quaking Punch. So I'm going to go for the Trubbish for three turns to draw as many cards as possible. Or to try and draw as many cards as possible. Uh, we'll put this down, even though Sudowoodo's there. We have Ace of Roller if we draw into like a Lele. It's like a turn slower for us, but it's kind of fine. Is he just holding on to N? No, looks like we both just have nothing. Uh, we could just go up Tittery here and start moving. Start advancing our board state a bit. I like this idea. <laughs> Four basic Pokemon. Seems good. Uh, yeah. That's pretty grim draws. Should have dealt with that pseudo Udo. DC to Lele. It's fine. And a pass. Uh, Fun and interactive. Hmm. Quaking Punch. Okay, there's a there's a card that refreshes our hand. It also refreshes our opponent's hand, so I want to scout how bad their hand is a little bit more. Okay, they drew in as well, it looks like. Okay, we have some stuff. Pay Retreat Toad. Seems actually pretty fine if we're getting a knockout here. <coughs> Let's go for Abyssal Hand. Chorus. Jeez, that's bad. That's so bad for us. How did we... Ugh. Oh, game. You just don't want to show off Glissopod, do you? You just don't want to... A 
looks like we'll drop two prizes. I think it's fine just to keep the lock going. Force the GX attack out. I think it's not too bad. It does force the GX, right? 9, 10, 11. Pretty D value. I wonder what other attackers he has. Oh, Necrozma. See what the opponent's up to. Yep, just the mad bull. Okay, let's get this show on the road, shall we? We did prize one, that was a factor in our lack of drawing. But we're here now, we're doing stuff. The active is the Pokemon that I want to be knocking out. Don't need to play a supporter this turn. Left us Abyssal Hand for one more card. Juniper's pretty bad. Do I want to N actually? Yeah, we want to N. His hand size is large. Getting an attachment into the bench Wimpod is fine. And we'll first impression. We can crossing cut next turn for a knockout. Didn't manage to get the Glisspot off the prizes. Bit of a shame. The Lele comes down. They're just going to grab N. Reasonable. DC to the Garbodor. Looks like they're going to go for an Acid Spray turn. Let's get heads. We will just deal with this Garbodor with a Acerola. Pretty effective. Got to remember to go into your Coco at this point. Don't want to go too soon into the Wimpod. And there we go. We ended up winning. Very slow. So, two games of dead draw. It's really bad when I'm trying to show off how good this deck is. Let's try and get some more games. Just accept that it's uh, RNG and that this deck is good. And how many other decks could survive like 10 turns doing nothing <laughs> like we just did? Not many. Okay, you're gonna win the flip. Hooray, we drew one of our five free retreaters at last. And we have Ultra Ball Bridget. Okay, we're actually we're actually doing fine. Ooh, uh This isn't the easiest matchup. They don't give us too many non EXs, but it's quite easy for us just to tank. How important is Verbank? We do 120 minus 20, so the Verbank's important. I want to keep like everything in this hand. Guzma's the only thing I want to get rid of. Uh, 
No, we'll get rid of a Verbank. Bridget not prized. Brill. One of our Wimpods is. I was going to go Wimpod, Toad, Remoraid anyway. So that's fine. Two of our Ace are prized. That's gross. Three Versa Seekers, though. Should be fine. Okay. And now you're seeing a nice turn one. Actually, I might go Coco. Coco's pretty good against Tynamos, right? Really puts him on a clock to find multiple. Also, I can like free retreat next turn and go for Blisspod if I have to. Yeah, this is probably best. Seems good. Gonna see a level ball from our opponent. Flying flip on Tynamo. Yeah, it's probably good. Depends how many he gets out, right? If he gets like three out, then it's really good. Otherwise, I may just be better off first impressioning. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. Well, he's going to get three Tynamos out. And an Ultra Ball. Maybe just Lele here. Wow. So they're really playing into Flying Flip. That's where he puts down a Mr. Mime. <laughs> no, just a Juniper. Maybe he's going to go for Thunder Wave. That would be annoying. Yep, yeah, looks like Thunder Wave. Big flip, seems good. Seems good. We can get a nine card chorus here. We could still get scoop up cyclone. We don't get scoop up cyclone. We do get a lot of things though. Choice band, very not good in this matchup. Let's just really develop the board nicely. Get one draw to hit um, Cyclone. Don't want to waste the laser because I think they're pretty important to deal with Raikus in one shot. So we'll uh, just keep them. The bank laser. We'll keep this combo for next turn. <coughs> it makes our attachment to Coco pretty bad, but it's fine. Like, otherwise this would be a Toad stuck active anyway and we miss Punch, so it's all fine, really. Can we see a Compressor from our opponent? They can start getting some Lightnings in the bin to start getting value from their Dynamoters. That looks like just getting rid of, just thinning some supporters, it looks like. Oh, they have a second compressor. That makes sense. There goes a couple of lightnings in the bin. Attachment to Raikou, Fury Belt to Raikou, and just another Thunder Wave. Oh, let's not do this game. Well, we have, uh, we have Guzma. We can just Guzma KO, I guess. Is it better to deal with a Tynamo or a Raikou? Super Order's already gone. I 
definitely want to take a prize. I think dealing with Raikou is good. <coughs> hmm. Yeah. Seems pretty fine. He doesn't have energy on him, so we can just use the first impression like this. Take a prize. Ooh, Acerola could be really good for us. We could get a crossing cut uh, GX. He has effectively 180. Okay, we get end away. He has effectively 180 with his ability. We had everything. We had uh, the Acer Rider for DC plus Verbank Glazer, but that's all gone now. Here comes eel number one. He's going to compress her probably for another eel. Yeah. Going to start seeing some Dynamotors on to Raikou. And the other one. In comes Raikou when you get hit with Thunder Lance. 120. What even is 120 damage? I'm gonna fire up a laser here. Getting heads is gonna be nice for preventing damage later on. We'll pick up Lithopod before attaching energy because it uh, reveals less info. Uh, I might choice ban just to draw a card. Uh, yeah. Let's draw a card. That is fine. And we'll first impression. Decrease to 100 because of his uh, ability. And we get a nice flip on the sleep there. 25% of the time it works every time. So, some more dynamiters to his benched Raikou. Wow, he plays Electros. Okay, that's pretty scary. He can get big damage moved over. Crazy. Do I actually want to do I actually have to carry this? Probably do, right? <laughs> well, he stays asleep nonetheless. We get one artillery draw. More lasers. Uh, we just want to knock this out, right? We can hit it for 30, and then... Oh no, wait, that doesn't work. Hmm. Okay. Do we just knock out an eel, then? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, nineteen, twenty. He can actually knock this out. This is crazy. What is this madness? Gonna try and make it hard for him. I'm not gonna get rid of this eel. So he needs energy. Thing is, if he does that, it's such a big like blowout of all of his resources. Crazy card. <coughs> what attack does this have? Okay, we don't have to worry about his attack at least. Rough Seas, Juniper. Go 
going to cash in on that rough seas, it looks like. There's another Raikou. An energy, so he could do this whole energy connect big knockout thing if he wants to. <laughs> Looks like he wants to. Jokes. <laughs> Witness this, people. <coughs> Nine energy on a Raikou, seems good. Oh, eight energy. So, uh, that's 160. So we just Acerola Lele knockout. Yeah. I almost clipped the rough seas then. That would have been so bad. I was like, oh, I can rough seas. Wait. <laughs> Let's not do that, Joe. We need this DC. Eight, nine, ten, two hundred. Yeah, you're dead. Uh, do I want to fire off a laser just to draw a card? Kind of want to develop another Wimpod now that one's gone. So we'll just throw a laser. Seeker. Not great, but uh, we're probably going to bounce this Lele next turn, so that's not terrible. It's a lot of energy to go in the bin. He has two cards left in deck as well. So he probably has to end us. Which means wind pods probably safe. I mean, you could deal with wind pod, but it's a single prize Pokemon. Wouldn't hurt us too much. It would mean we can just DC Lele and knock it out again. So there's a manual attachment four. Okay, ten. Yeah, that's reasonable. Okay, just a Thunder Lance. We just gonna do our loop, I guess so. Next turn he can eel eel. So that's three six six is one seventy. Okay, so um, Ace Rider's not even good. So we should probably just think about drawing cards. Wacky Electros. Wow, no Wimpod or Glispod, that's sadness. Absolute sadness. Just energy drive. We'll go down to two, then he'll go down to two. He probably has to end. Hopefully, with artillery support, we can uh, get into a Glissopod next turn, though. I'm going to use Field Blower, sure. Versus Seeker going to come down for the Karen instead of N. Okay. That uh, resets his deck a little bit but it does give us back two things that we are desperately looking for he does put us in a position of needing to end though pretty cool play from him so 
So this effectively has 150. Missing from N is pretty gruesome, right? If we just take the knockout, how many energies? Seven, eight, nine, ten. He could feasibly play eleven. Feasibly. So I think we do just N. Blissapod DC after Octillery is good. Do I put any Pokemon down? Maybe just the other Remoraid? Don't want to attach because DC could be an out to things, things and stuff. Huh. Do I play Cyclone just to draw a card? Probably not. Uh, I mean, maybe we just take the two prizes off the board for now. Or maybe we just burn the card. Yeah, we want to hit this for sure. Come on. Come on now, game. Okay. Very good. Get out of here. <coughs> Point goes into Electros. I'm pretty sure they need to have an extra energy in their deck to do anything this turn. They do have a Raikou. They also need to earn us out with Guzma for game. Okay, we got there. Thank goodness for that. Okay. That was much better set up on our part. Raikou is not the easiest matchup because it is non EX based. It does force resources out of us. Um, but we got there. And uh, I guess, I mean, most Raikou Eels can't get one hit KOs. Like, they could play Pikachu EX, but we can respond Pikachu EX very easily. They could play Coco GX, but we never commit energy to our board. So, I think we were kind of okay to just do the Acerola cycle. He just so happened to play an Electros that was pretty spicy. Let's have one more game and uh, hopefully show off this deck one last time. Again, it's a really grim hand. Gah! Don't squash my dreams, Glisses Pod. Okay, Turbo Dark Cry. It's a matchup I kind of like, as long as I can draw cards. <laughs> Gonna see a compressor from the opponent. Looks like they have Versus Seeker in hand with their battle compressor. They're also gonna get Hooper. So it looks like they've got a pretty ideal start here. Oh, they also go for a Jirachi EX. Interesting. I wonder their reasoning for putting a supporter in the discard if they're going to use Jirachi EX anyway. But a Jirachi EX and a Shaman EX on the board is really nice for Glissopod if we actually set up here. It's going to be a Tillmon gets this. Yeah. The big one card swing. 
I mean, he can still be happy just because he knows our hand is pretty trash. Skills. We got the skills, boys. Um, still pretty bad for us. Do I put a Lele down just to attach an energy to it so I can actually retreat into it? We're gonna take Bridget because I'm likely to just discard it with Juniper. We'll attach here, so if Wimpod gets knocked out, which is likely, we can promote Lele, then pay retreat into our Glissopod next turn. That's the idea. I won't Wimp out into it though, because I don't really want it to get knocked out straight away. And it defeats the purpose. We then have to promote a three retreat, a three retreat Wimpod, not a free retreat Wimpod, and that's not what we want next turn. Trying to smell for elixir. They're going to continue to go ham and eggs on us, it looks like. As long as they don't replace the stadium, I feel kind of comfortable, to be fair. It's not too much to ask for to find one of our four lasers and one of our three Calisopods GXs and a grass energy next turn. It's not too much to ask for. Looks like they're just going to Sycamore again if they're finding a Dark Cry. Yeah, versus Seeker. Grabbing Sycamore. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fifteen so far. They do replace Stadium. Bit of a bummer. Seventeen now. Nineteen. Sixteen to be active because we only have uh, non X active, but okay. Drawing scoop up cyclone is obviously sadness. Speaking of sadness, man, this deck is just not drawing what we want. There's the turns of no supporter, and then there's the turns of all supporter. Fabulous. Hmm, not fun. Ramped two ten as well. I'm gonna get this and see the troll hand that we drew into. They really didn't need anything, so it was like a luxury gets us anyway. Gonna go for another laser, this time we get heads, that's pretty cool, we're just gonna play the end. My goodness. No fun to be had. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We could play this, he keeps one, two, three, four, five, and we get rid of the juicy targets, which is a problem. We do get more poison damage for this guy at least. I guess it's worth.
it's not his uh, thingamajigs being an out. Like other shamans and leles. Gonna try and draw some cards. Because God knows we need some. None of those ones. Jeez. This is some grim draws. Let's see if sleep bails us out. No. I think we lost. Man, I'm going to keep playing this deck because it was doing so well for me earlier. And I don't know what's wrong with it. In theory, it's not too janky, but it's just drawing, like, not well. I don't even think there's much greed in here. Like, Laser Bank is kind of greed, but... It should not, uh, should not amount to this. Let's try one more game, because I'm determined to show off this deck in a good light. <laughs> like, I've already kind of failed, because it's dead drawn three times. But the core is such a good concept. Also, Scoop Up Cyclone's been terrible. I've drawn it all the wrong times. Maybe if it's comp search, it's different. Okay, this is good. We've gone first every game, which is pretty cool. I think it's every game anyway. Okay, we're up against Aquabox. This is a good matchup. Toad's still probably worth putting in. Yep, thought as much. We can be pretty patient though, I think. Uh, you know what, we can just... We don't actually need cards in our hand, right? If we just grab this. And just go Glissopod on two. Do we just win? Maybe. Maybe this just outright wins us the game. Pretty greedy of me. But also having Scoop Up Cyclone is pretty good. Lapras getting float stoned. Looks like they're going to have a passive turn. This may actually just be Ninetales that plays a Lapras, even. Ninetales being a harder matchup. I'm going to slap Rough Seas in. Put Coco down. Water Energy still goes on to the Lapras. Okay. Wow. So yeah, maybe they just play Vulpix for more setup. But I think Collect is pretty fine, right? I mean, it's good in this spot because it's not too prized in the active. We're going to see the Beacon <coughs> after the Instruct for three. Which was pretty clean, must admit. Okay. Beggars can't be choosers, we'll just take the prize. Will we though? Uh, we get responded on with Lapras. We have to scoop up Cyclone. Then we go into what? I guess we need to attach the grass to the toad. Just to maybe slow down their like patches and such. I don't love this. But maybe the prize bells us.
It's a good card, actually. We want to develop double Wimpod after we Cyclone, so he can't just target one. So it's actually a fine prize. Another Vulpix. So yeah, we saw him take a load of nine tails, right? Now then, energy to Lapras. He's <coughs> gonna do the wow face. Does that mean he's gonna delinquent us or something? No. Wow, top decking DC is actually pretty sick here. Uh, I actually feel fine using the GX here. Because we can just one shot the Laprases um, so easily with first impression or armor press. We're just going to try and protect ourselves from like paralysis and such. We ha I know we have the Cyclone, but there's no point in just wasting it. Guzma's nice. DC to the Vulpix, they are going a Nolan Ninetales route. Fortunately, they have four prizes on their board <coughs> currently. I mean, they could play AZ feasibly. And then we're down to like Gnaw plus Flying Flip. We have lasers, we have Laser Bank. It's chill. But this Lapras is definitely going down. Oh boy. My man. This is where he concedes, right? Don't want to play any of those cards. Not really. Keep the space open for Lele's for game. comes the nine tails there's the energy field blow is fine and there's the end we we're fortunate to get out to three <laughs> to be honest I mean, we drew into Ultra Ball anyway, so we could have just gone Lele for game regardless. And that's what we're going to do. Lele equals Guzma equals game. So, uh, lots of games, lots of awkward draws. So I think maybe the concept is good. Maybe I go back to the drawing board with the list a little bit. I'll show it off again. Um, I still back the archetype a lot. I really like the uh, Glissopod. I think maybe what we do is we maybe thin Octillery to a 1-1 one -one for more physical supporters. Uh, I think... 3 Juniper, 2N has been punishing at times. Um, maybe just a 4th Lele is also potentially the play. I think maybe cutting an energy for a supporter is what we go for. We just go for like this. Uh, that's already a start. Uh, we could thin Octillery to 1-1. One, one. Kind of cheeky. Uh, maybe just increasing like the Wimpod count can all be relatively helpful. Like We seem to be missing a few pieces here and there, but it was mainly down to supporters mainly down to dead draw maybe that 1-1 one, one split is already like enough of a swing <laughs> it doesn't sound big but it's pretty swingy we didn't find energy being a problem ever we were in fact discarding quite a few 
I know there's a lot of moving pieces going on in this deck. I know you need to get quite specific hands, but I still really rate the archetype in theory. We lost really hard to a Turbo Dark, but I've also beaten like three Turbo Dark with this deck. Uh, just because when you are in the combo, it's so dirty for them. So, yeah, let me know what you think about Glissapod uh, Toad and Glissapod in general. Uh, do you prefer a different archetype? Is Garbodor still the best approach? That could well still be the case. Um, there's my list, I guess. Um, I mean, I'll still post the original list down below, but after seeing those games, I think it's fair that we need to put more supporters in uh, because we just weren't drawing too well. Uh, maybe even like a Pokemon communication could help out in here. Maybe that's a card I want to look to put in. Pokecom's actually really cool. Uh, do I want to play that card? Maybe. Yeah, food for thought. Uh, Glissapod is uh, a good archetype. I want to see this deck running well. And uh, I think it has the tools to be really strong in this set. So, Or in Expanded right now. So there we go, guys. Um, I feel a bit defeated now after trying so hard to make this work and just seeing lots of dead draw with the deck. But at least it's food for thought for you. Uh, in theory, this archetype does a bunch of things. In practice, maybe it's a bit too cute, a bit too many moving pieces, as I've just mentioned. Um, but I think um, it's typing and it's numbers and Acer Roller being um, so powerful in, the, in this sort of deck, just at its most powerful. I think um, there's definitely something here for it. So let me know what you guys think down below and I'll be back with more standard soon. So yeah, cheers guys.